Hi everyone and welcome to our ThingLink webinar. Uh, today we're going to be talking all about ThingLink's Scenario Builder and how you can create courses. Um, we've got about an hour um, so we'll try and get through it and you can see there Ivan is looking remarkably <laughs> like, uh, Kyla's looking remarkably like Ivan. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, it's not Ivan today. It's going to be me uh, joining Louise, but um, I hope I make a, a stand-in for Ivan, if that's okay with everyone. Oh, well, actually, Ivan and Anton, I'm pleased to say, are actually in the chat. Um, so they are going to be answering any of your questions. So if you've got any questions regarding ThingLink, ThingLink accounts or Scenario Builder, please do put them in the chat. And we've got loads of people joining us already so hi to susan who's joining us from long beach we've got uh kyla's uh hi, hi kyla how are you keeping dry that's from amanda who's joined us and yeah lots of people london uh korea, korea i saw earlier we've got someone from korea so welcome to you all um, as I mentioned, we are going to be giving you a lovely demonstration of ThingLink Scenario Builder in action. And if there's anything that you'd really like to see as well, just pop it in the chat. We'll be keeping an eye on it as we go on through. Um, so I thought this would be quite apt because so many of you tell us that uh, when you've looked at ThingLink, this, you know, as it is now, you say, Oh, I looked at ThingLink ages ago and it just looks so different. It's so advanced from what it was. So I guess that's why I put this message up to say, you know, if you think you know ThingLink, think again, because it's just grown so much in the last few years. And as I always do at the start of our webinars, I just give a little introduction for those of you who might not know ThingLink so well. We have lots of people who are joining us. Hi, Gina from the East Coast. Um, someone from Thailand's just joined. We love that you join in our webinars and particularly ask questions, but it's also good for us just to give a little bit of background again and as to what ThingLink is. And ThingLink is now 13 years old. Can you believe it? Um, I've been here four years. That's flown by. Um, but ThingLink has grown so much, but also in, in the various sectors. So we have an education kind of sector, if you like, and we try and put on webinars and provide guidance and decks and specific training for those of you who are working in education. We are used extensively in e-learning, and by e-learning, we mean employee training uh, for processes and um, manuals, talent development, as it might be called in your country uh, across the states. But that learning and development and induction and onboarding, that's just some of the ways in which ThingLink is used in e-learning. And then we also have communications and marketing kind of sector. So we have people that are involved in creating commercial courses, or they might just want to create ThingLink and then share it um, in a way that it's just publicly being accessed. So in education, you might be using it and you only want your class to see something for e-learning. You might want to use it for your learners, particularly in your company or your organization, but you also might want to see the data as to how your learners, your employees are actually engaging with that content. And that's the kind of difference. Does that sound okay, Kyla, if I kind of covered our three sectors there? Yeah, I think definitely. Um, we often say that ThingLink is so many things to so many different people. And as you say, it's grown so much and we now have the capability to reach all these different verticals in so many different ways. So it's hard to kind of drill it down sometimes. Yeah. It is. Um, so if we had to come up with a strap line of what ThingLink is now that it's 13 years old, it is that the fact that it's the fastest easiest, immersive and interactive content creation suite. And of course, technology is advanced as ThingLink's been growing. And we've really rolled with the times as well, made sure that we're accessible on any device. New VR headsets, there might be some new VR headsets coming out soon and we'll make sure that we're compatible with those as well. Um, but if I had to kind of chunk it up into the various products we have, 
we now like to say that Thinglink is a suite of products or a suite of tools. And we have lots of different features, but I think as a suite of products, we can actually put it into these six categories. So we've got Thinglink Editor, which is the multimedia editor, which is like the OG. We've then created our scenario builder where you can mix and match all of the things that you create with Thinglink, your Thinglink media, your Thinglink scenes, or your Thinglinks as some people like to call them. You can put them into those branching scenarios and that's exactly what we're gonna be focusing on today. But you can of course create guided tours and guided tours are where you can sequentially take someone through a tour. We've also got our AR app that will be coming out later this year. So look out for that. You'll be able to scan your phone in, as in a sort of real person context in real life and hold it over an image. And if that image has been created in the thing link, then all of the hotspots will appear on your phone or whatever device you're using uh, to view it on. We've added some AI into our thing link as well um, in our creation flow, which is gonna be really helpful for you. And we've also created our Pano to 360 app, which is where you can actually upload your photos, your panoramas that you've taken with your phones and we will convert them into photospheres for you. So just a little roundup, if you are completely new to ThingLink, just joining us um, for the first time, when you get the slides, which will email you at the uh, end of the webinar, if we run over an hour, you'll get them before the end of the webinar, but we've made sure that everything is in there for you. And if you click this particular slide, it will take you to a really nice overview of ThingLink and all the different um, ways and tags and media that you can use. So as I mentioned, this is a suite of tools that you've got now, and you'll be able to create a range of different types of thing links or types of assets and you can mix and match those together and we've seen it's really interesting I think we're quite lucky in that we see how people are using thing link which I think is almost an indicator of how people are using different types of media and AI for example so we're seeing you know people be quite brave and try and build new things we've seen some examples with chatbots appear where you can create these really easily with AI now for example um, but we do see a big focus on companies organizations using ThingLink to really get over some quite chunky processes so if you've got an operating procedure and it's just on a PDF why not turn it into a thing link? It'd be accessible on devices and it actually would be a lot more engaging. Hi, Gemma from Bristol that's just joined us. So let's get started um, onto the specifics around e-learning. So I've mentioned how you know technology is changing the way that people deliver their training or provide their assets or helpful materials to their new employees, but actually, what we see a lot of and why people are starting to use ThingLink is that they are um, trying to overcome the fact that a lot of their existing traditional training methods might have been videos or they might have had PDFs and actually realizing now that we need to make sure that we're looking at inclusivity and accessibility requirements for everything that we do. And it's also really telling of us as a, an organization that we're caring about our employees to make sure they can access everything. And maybe that is off site, it might be on site, access anywhere, anytime on any device. And we also see that a lot of creators and maybe HR departments have had off the shelf training, but that doesn't align with the company's organizational culture and actually retrofitting what you really need into an existing kind of training off the shelf just doesn't work. So these are some of the reasons why we're seeing this huge growth in um, employee training and ThingLink being used for these particular purposes. Um, and yes, just to, to say again, this is some of the solution points to those problems that we're seeing that we can demonstrate access anywhere, anytime on any device and including multimedia um, content 
is actually really culturally relevant for people as well now. And you can create those scenario based learning modules that are just super easy to create. I haven't mentioned it yet, but uh, I would have shown you on a, an, another thing link up. I'll, I'll do that when we come to the demonstration. But we also have something called Immersive Reader, which is built into ThingLink, which means that any of your text and media tags can be translated into over 80 different languages. So just by the very nature of using ThingLink and adding those tags um, means that you're going to be offering these um, options for your employees. So simple, intuitive interface. It's super easy to learn. And what I like about it most is that there's no coding required. And we're seeing a lot of like really helpful tools appear now, particularly with the advent of AI, um, that you don't need any coding or technical experience. And again, this is a, a you know another nice feature of ThingLink that we're also adding in that support for AI. And don't forget. You've got support from our team as well, Anton and Ivan, our much loved customer support team. They are in the chat. So if you've got any questions about um, accounts or using Scenario Builder, then please do pop them in the chat. I'm going to show you some examples now. I thought this would be really helpful. We do have one example which I really love because this is actually one from the ThingLink team. And I think this shows the beauty of having a really interactive, immersive experience. Um, someone's just put in the chat, which I think is lovely, best customer support team on earth. We cannot agree with you more. So in this example, um, which is actually one that we've created, but we created this as a, a mock-up for, for a customer you've actually got a 360 image here of uh, a hotel reception. It looks like it's a hotel reception uh, coming up to Christmas. And this scenario is all about how to handle a reclamation. So imagine you've got staff who need to learn how to cope with really difficult customers. This is a really nice way of being able to do that. Here we've got a tag that just sets out the context if I click proceed, we've actually gone into a 360 video now, which is uh, Henry, who's one of our team, who's rehearsing this. Good morning. So now what do you do? So you could say, good morning. How can I help you? Hi. Hi. What's up? Actually, it's more professional to say, good morning. How are you? I couldn't sleep last night because of this loud clattering noise in my room. At some point it stopped, but then came back again. It's the room number one, two, three. And here's your branching question. So you can imagine that if I'd actually said, all right, how's it hanging? It probably would have sent me down a different path and you would have got a much angrier, grumpier customer. But here it gives you the options to actually try and have this dialogue. And we've created this dialogue in a very simple way that you can create with Scenario Builder. And this is the kind of material that's really going to engage your employees. It's got a wow factor. It's got a moment of impact and insight into this particular. I would much rather do something like this, wouldn't you, Kyla, than just read off a, a PDF yeah, or a piece absolutely. of this, how to deal with customers. This is just a perfect example to show. And I think it's worthwhile just pointing out that in the scenario that we're going to show everyone as building later on, we're just using 2D images, but your media can be anything from your thing link. So 360 images, 360 videos, like, like Henry's version. It's Kyla. Well, I can definitely beat that because when I was a student, I um, was working in a hotel as a chambermaid and I had to do a training course about bed bugs. Oh, no, that's very current. There's a bed bug outbreak, I think. Yeah. At the moment. So, yeah. And how did you learn about bed bugs? That must have been quite a, a scary. I think it was PowerPoint slides. I, uh, PowerPoint slides about bed bugs. So, uh, and <laughs> I think it's really. Work. It's really good to have these types of assets. Not only are they engaging, but they're encouraging feedback because you can build forms into them and make sure you get feedback. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to show you this one quickly because this is the style of the one that we're going to be um, showing you and creating to show you how easy it is. 
Um, this is Information Security Foundations. You'll get access to this so that you can go through it. We've got our context. We're building, you know, that kind of welcome and introduction. And of course, all of these tags, you'll be able to translate or have different legibility options. And as you go through, it takes you to a 360 environment where you can actually get that, you know, what's it like to be, you know, in an office where there could be so many information security breaches and um, people talking loudly, leaving passwords open, leaving computers open. And here you've got some, some nice research that's embedded in the tag here as well. So it's got a theoretical background. And then, of course, you can have challenge questions where people can explore in a really safe environment. If they did do something wrong, you know, what would be the outcome of that particular choice? So in this one, um, you explore the office scene, you've read some case studies, which do you consider poses the greatest threat? Is it your organization's employees or is it hackers and criminals? And actually, we've chosen the right that our answer there because uh, we've identified that the biggest security risks might be other employees that we're working with. Um, so, yeah, that's all in the examples that you'll be able to go through um, that we send you. And I'm just going to show you now when we go on to our next example. And um, we're going to show you one that we've created and that we're going to recreate with you to show you exactly how the scenario builder works. But it also gives us an opportunity to see the back end of it as well. Um, so I'm just now going to go into my ThingLink account. And uh, you know, when you go into your ThingLink account, you, all you need to do is go to thinglink.com and it will take you into your account page. And I'm just going to click on the scenarios here and you can see that there's some scenarios that I've already made, but I've also got a scenario here that we're going to use for our context. And what's quite nice here is that you can see, and this is a new edition and you've got Anton to thank for this one, um, that you can actually change the views. So this is a, a, a learning scenario that I've already created. It's got a start point. It's got an end point here as well. And over on the left here, you can see I've got the normal view. I've got a mini view, which uh, helps me to see it in all its glory, like a skeleton. And then I've also got this micro view as well. So here you can see my scenario laid out in the kind of style that helps me to plan as well. Um, so here you can see that I can click on and view any of these particular icons here. And that's a new feature. Um, we've just had a comment, which is really lovely. I'll put on the screen that um, this feature has been really helpful. It's really good to hear. If you've got any other comments, anyone that you want to add in. Amanda, you're loving the new color blocks. Yeah, they're really helpful, aren't they? Um, to be able to see how you can plan out your thing link. So that's just a little view of the over the so the um user interface. So this is what you see when you create a scenario um, that you'll see it's made up of blocks and branches. Um, and you can see that really nice and visually there as well. Um, before we go back into creating our scenario, I'm very pleased to say that we've updated our guidance. And this new guidance uh, was released today. So if you are on the webinar and you click on this slide, you'll be able to click on this image and it will take you to our Google Drive. Um, here we go. Our Google Drive uh, where we've stored this, where you can download this. And it is 11 pages, <laughs> but it has got every single um, scenario structure that we've created for you as examples. Um, it's got lots of, thanks Amanda, getting some love here. Um, it has got an explanation of each of the templates as well that we've created with the color blocks. Um, lots of helpful tips and tricks and pro tips there. So please do have a look at that as well. 
um because that's going to really help you um to make sure you completely understand how it all links together but it is fairly intuitive as you know and what we've also done as amanda's pointed out is we have put some nice colored blocks in to help as well and this actually is a thing link that I've put together as well, um, showing off our new uh, icon color picker here. We're able to match our icons now in whatever color you want, which is something that was hotly requested. So here is the overview of the six blocks that we've given you to be able to create those scenarios. So the first one here you can see is the media block. And if I just switch black back into my um, tab here, you can see that here at the start point, it gives me the option to add media in. I think Kyla's just put that link into the chat as well. And you can see I've got this media block. If I click on the media here, you can see that I can add a scene or I can indeed embed. Now, this is something that is uh, maybe not everyone is aware of, but if I want to, I can upload a thing link in here. So I can just pick a thing link um, from my account. I can also uh, select a tour. So if you created a guided tour in your ThingLink account, you can put that in there as well. And that might be a really nice kind of starting, putting things into context, or it might be a question that you want to ask or train people about that tour. Thinking about the building site, imagine that you had that 360 there, but you could also have a 360 guided tour right in the scenario builder. But what you can also do is paste an embed code in here as well. And of course, those of you that know and love ThingLink already will be familiar with the embed tag. So here you can also now paste in the embed code from a Google map, from a Google form, from a Quizlet or a Padlet or anything else that you use, maybe a Microsoft form. Um, and you can use this like you would the embed tag. So you can add a scene, and by scene, we mean thing link, thing links, some people call them, or thing link media, or you can even add in your embed code from YouTube or anywhere else. So that's just a really nice update that I wanted to make sure that everybody knew. So back in my thing link here, which I'm um, just going through, you can see, you can add media um, and that is any sort of embed. And I've actually put a really helpful sheet in that link there in this thing link, which you've just been given, um, which is a, a link to a suggested list of all the things that you can embed. Um, you could embed Flipgrid, for example, or Trello or lo loads of different things. So that's all there for you. Number two is our branching block. And the branching block is quite self-explanatory, but of course here you can add a timer to a branch because you can add some additional um, pressure. Um, you can also create, if you can see that big here, um, you can add a simple branching or you can add conditional branching, which means you might have to get two answers right to go to a particular scene. So not just simple, but conditional branching. And uh, I really like, uh, I don't know who's put it in the chat, whether it was you, Kyla, or Ivan, or Anton, but um, really nice comment there. It's about what works best for you. And Jessica's just made a point, H5P content embeds really nicely as well. Thanks for that, Jessica. Um, you've also got your plain, um, I shouldn't say just plain, but your text block. And remember that you can have markup language, so you can make it bold. You can also add images into a text block as well. And we'll have a look at that. Your question block, you can ask both simple questions with a answer, which could be a, a word or a passcode. So this is gonna be really nice for kind of like escape room type scenarios where you want to make sure that people get the right code or they've got to answer the question exactly right, or you can make it harder 
with or easier with multiple choice questions as well and multiple choice questions you can also have combinations of answers so if you wanted people to answer a b and c as the right answers where the options are a b c and d then you can set that as well and all of these features remember have come because of feedback from yourselves in our community and if you do have any other suggestions keep them coming we really love to hear um, any of your feedback at the bottom here these last two that i'm just going to show you your jump to or jump back which helps you to ping someone back into the question and they can have another go and remember that successful e-learning scenarios are about enabling people to make choices and see the consequences of those choices. And that's why giving people the option to jump back to a question and see what happens if they put the wrong answer on way of being able to see, you know, the consequences rightly or wrongly of some of those questions. And the other point is, is that sometimes when you build scenarios, you might have a range of um, options for your branch and it isn't that one is right and one is wrong. It might be that one choice is more wrong than another, if that makes sense. So that's the jump back or jump to block. And then we have our goals. Of course, it's nice to reward people and gamified experiences are just a really nice way of being able to award points to people. And if they get through certain questions, they get more points and all of this, of course, you can do within ThingLink now. Um, just a nice question that Gina's just put on the screen there as well. You'd love an assessment tool. That's brilliant. And that's exactly what you can do with the question block here. That's an assessment tool that's built in because if you're sharing this with your employees um, and you are sharing it in the organization, you can actually see from the data where an employee has completed the question and completed it correctly. Um, so you actually have that end of lesson assessment. And that's super helpful of you, Gina, because that's exactly what we're going to show in our example coming up. So thank you for, for making that point. Um, so now you know the blocks and you're fully acquainted with uh, the blocks that you can use in Scenario Builder. I mentioned pressure with timers. You can put timers actually in the branching block or you can have a timer that's for the whole thing and I think that's really nice that you've got those options because if you want to add some realistic pressure when you've got to make a decision and the clock's ticking it's designed to emulate maybe a situation where you've got customers tapping their hands saying where's my order you know come on <laughs> which is really helpful and Mark has just put a really nice question on the screen yes absolutely it can be exported to canvas um which is the instructor uh, canvas gradebook because we have LTI 1.3 built in and we'll show you that and uh Sarah's just said yeah it works really great thank you for that that's really nice to to hear um I'm going to move on now because I know time's moving on and I'm going to just show you some really helpful tips for planning. Now, you might have heard of the six P's. Um, this is the five P's. I've taken one of the P's out because it might be a bit rude for a webinar. But as they say, perfect planning to prevent poor performance. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So when you're planning your thing link, um, it would be really helpful. I find it really helpful to think about it as though there were five C's. So I always like to start with a context and context is everything. And then you think about your challenge. So you've got your context that you're going to build with that 360 environment or that kind of immersive experience. And then you can add in your challenge. So context followed by challenge. You might then want to offer choices um, from that challenge and the range of choices. And then you might be able to have the consequence of that choice. And then, of course, you might want to rinse and repeat that process where you've got context, challenge, choice, consequence, challenge. Again, and there where it says goal, that's about the contemplation or the feedback 
um, that you might give. So you might explain to someone um, or you might give them a chance to be able to have those um, explorative kind of feedback. You might want to even link out to something else. Now, this is quite cool. So we have, because we thought this would be helpful, we've actually created a, um, uh, I have got it here somewhere. So we created a little sandbox. So this is really, really cool. So on Canva, you've got something called Canva Whiteboard. And uh, we put this together so that you could play around and move your blocks and uh, create a kind of template scenario. It just helps with that planning. I sometimes even like to just sketch it out onto a little bit of paper. And I did this um, for the one that we're going to show you. But you might want to use something like this but there's no harm in using pen and paper. There's no harm in using a table, a spreadsheet, whatever works for you. But we'll give you the link to this as a template so that you can create your own sandbox. Um, thank you. Yeah, game changer. It really is. It's just super to have this. If you're using Canva, you can still use it with a free version. But educators, you do get a free version anyway, because Canva give it free for education and schools so yeah that's our really helpful sandbox that we've got for you so right i've got 25 minutes left i'm going to show you just how easy it is to create a scenario from scratch so we have got a coffee related emergency kyla this is something that you and I thought would be a really good <laughs> example of uh, what to create with um, a uh, branching scenario. Just before I move on, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you when I'm putting this together. So I am going to go into my account here. I'm going to get into my scenarios. And here I've got my espresso machine malfunction storyboard. And you can see here that that matches the scenario uh, sandbox that we created with Canva. But what I also wanted to show you was, you know, don't be afraid to use a little bit of AI. And um, this is ChatGPT4. You could also use ChatGPT uh, 3.5, which is a free version. And I've just typed in here, create a branching scenario all about a co broken coffee machine. And, and you can see how quickly it builds that scenario for you so you know don't be afraid to use something like this even if it gives you something that you wouldn't use it might help to stimulate how you want to create a scenario but not to be outdone i'm going to go back into my account now and show you uh, that if i go back into my planning stage um and i've got uh, my espresso machine one here if I click on the plus, you can see that we also provide AI tools. So you don't even need to go to chat GPT. I'm just showing you that that is one thing that has helped me to plan some of my ideas. But we also have the ability to generate questions, to suggest branches, and even write a recap for you. So, you know, we're, we are now really embracing um, AI and building these tools to help you. OK, so this is the espresso machine malfunction. And let's just have a look at that so we can see exactly how it works. So I'm going to go to my espresso machine one here and then click on the preview. And this opens it up into another tab. And you can see here we've got our opening time, which has got the opening time scenario. It's a really busy uh, coffee shop of course um and it's got it's just a, a little coffee shop maybe i'm not going to say it's a chain or anything like that click proceed we've even got a 3d uh, model of a barista style coffee machine which we put into our scenario here we we're saying to our staff this is a training module for staff um the, with the coffee machine we've got training baristas and we could just give our baristas the process operating checklist uh, or the standard operating procedure, but we thought this would be a lot more fun. Click proceed, 
and then we've got a problem brewing here, Kyla. It's uh, something, the espresso machine, which is absolutely critical to this coffee shop's operation, has started to malfunction. So what do you do? Well, we've added some time pressure in here because that's what it's going to be like. You've got a row of customers and um, your coffee machine's failing. What do you do? Do you inspect the machine or do you tell the customers that it's, the coffee's off? It's broken. Um, well, if you did that, actually, you know, half the customers have left. It would have been helpful if you'd actually solved the question, uh, solved the issue right away. It might have helped. So what do we do? Well, we've actually bounced our employee back into the question now. They've had a chance to see what the wrong answer is. They inspect the machine quickly. Hooray, they've got 50 points. Then we've got another question here. The machine's not working, Kyla. What are they gonna do? Um, so what's the next course of action? Click proceed, still not working. Do you call for help from a colleague from the kitchen? Come and help you take orders or to just power the machine off and on in the hope that it will reset itself. Well, actually, if you did that, half the remaining customers get cross and suddenly they're all over social media saying, stay away from that coffee shop. Click proceed again, bounces you back in and call for help, which gives you 50 points again. You've now got 100 points and two hands are better than one because your colleague can now help with the other customers, take some orders, you can power it off and on again, and it's resolved it. Here's that assessment question someone was asking. Here we can say what are the correct answers and the correct steps for this particular scenario. Go back, try again, and that's the right answer. Click proceed, and here you've got your congratulations screen at the end. You've achieved both goals. You've got maximum points, 100% of the scenario is completed, and you've got one out of one on the correct answers. And of course, all of this data. Um, you can download as a spreadsheet as well, or it will write back as a grade book to your LMS. So now that we've gone through that, we're going to put it together. OK, so I'm going to click back and onto my scenarios. And what I've also done already is, and we're quite happy to give you the Canva template to these examples, but we've already created our ThingLink Media so we created all of those assets in advance and it's really helpful to have them in one folder in your media. So I'm going to go into my scenarios and click create scenario and I'm going to give this a name and I've got a Google Doc that's already open with all of my text in that I did from my planning and I'm just going to paste that in there. So now we've got our espresso machine. Now this is new. We have templates. And if you click on any of these templates, it will just have placeholders for you that you can just switch out. So we've built these. It's all in that guidance and it's already there for you. But I'm going to create one from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my media and I've got my coffee shop ready. And I've got my first one, which is my context, which you saw. It's the nice coffee machine there. The next I'm going to go into my media again. And I'm going to put in that nice coffee 3D object that people can explore. And now I've got the opportunity to add in my challenge slide, which or challenge image, which said exactly what the problem was that's brewing. We're going to send you the Canva templates uh, for these um, images that we've used. Yeah, really happy to do that. It's actually in the email that you're going to get. Uh, we've put them there so you can make your own. Um, and these are just like nice placeholder, uh, you know, kind of style ones or they can give more information, but you're welcome to have them. Now I'm going to add in my branch, um, which is going to um, be where they make that first decision. So I'm going to uh, say we know that the uh, problem that was on the uh, thing link before was that it was a problem with the coffee machine. So I'm going to choose simple branching rather than conditional branching. And my first branch, which is going to be the right answer, is actually going to be that was inspect the machine quickly. So we just paste in 
inspect the machine quickly. My wrong answer, which is going to be my second branch, was actually, if you remember, to tell the customers that the machine isn't working so they can all go away. Now, that was not the right thing to do because, of course, you know, the consequences of that. So we've got our right branch and our wrong branch. Now, to be helpful, we've also added in other options here. You can delete the branch. You can clone and attach it to another branch. You can even move and attach it. And that's something that we've added as you go to create even bigger types of scenarios. So of course, the right answer then deserves a goal. So I'm gonna put a goal, we're gonna give them 50 points and we are going to tell them that actually, that was a really sensible and proactive choice. So that's our nice goal that's there. And then we've also got on the wrong side, we have some text, if you remember, that had a description in the top that said um, half the customers had left. So I'm just going to copy that in into my text block. And actually, I want that to be nice and big and bold. So I'm going to turn that into a main header. You'll see now we've got markup language, which means you can have bold and italics and different types of things. But you can also add images here. So actually, I've got a man leaving a coffee shop that I'm going to have in my image so that it brings it to life. You know, if you'd only performed that 30 second check. And I'm just going to put the title here as, oh, dear. There we go. And save. So now I've got my branches, but do you know what would be really good is if we added that timer on to add some pressure in. You've got customers waiting, coffee machines not working. Okay, and now where we had that wrong answer, what we want is we want to jump back, add a jump back block to the question. So that means that they can jump back and because we've got these colored blocks now, you can also see a line that jumps that back, that person back when they make that choice, just makes it super easy. So my next um, one here is that I have another media image which says, well, hang on a second, there's still a problem because the uh, coffee machine's still broken. So we're going to add another in branch, another branch in there now, which is going to be our second challenge. It's still not working. What are you going to do? So just adding that in as the title of my second branch. Now, the first option or the right option, according to our standard operating procedures, would be that you have to call for another colleague to help out and maybe they can start to take orders from our customers for when we do get it right. Or of course, the other option is that you power the machine off and on in the hope that it will reset itself without asking from any help from the kitchen. There we have it. So now we've got our two branches, call for help, power the machine down, and we've also added in a timer so that it builds up the pressure. Um, and now we move on to the end. Uh, so we know that powering the machine was actually the wrong answer again. So we're going to have our text block that actually says half the remaining customers left. They didn't actually wait. They got cross and then they started to splash it all over social media and I just put a nice uh, image in there as well so that it just emphasized the angry person jumping in their car posting on social media all the things um, that uh, we didn't want them to have to answer so I'm just going to paste that in there so they have that in that block there there we go and that's that done. We've got our wrong answer. And now we're just going to put that 
jump back block in, which goes to there. There we go. Nearly finished. Home stretch. This is a world record for me building this because we tried it out today. <laughs> and I was trying to make sure that we stayed in the um, time limit. We've got another goal. It's maximum points. Give them 50 points here so they know they've got 100 points and you could even have if they got 100 points maybe they got a voucher and they actually got a nice cake and coffee for themselves as well and here we can say well done there we go um so now we've added in our goal we probably want to add in a final media scene and we've got some nice happy customers happy smiley customers because they've got the right answer there and we can add in our final block, which is our multiple choice question. Here, you could have had that open question that we mentioned, but um, I'm just gonna do a simple question for the um, final assessment, my final knowledge check to make sure that my customers, sorry, that my um, employees have, have got this. And I'm just gonna paste in the right answer which is to check for loose connections and bean levels and all the things there. And I'm going to tick this one to show that this is indeed the right answer. And I'm also going to put in a wrong question. But I don't want um, people to kind of get upset if they're doing this and they've got the wrong answer. So I'm just going to say, don't worry, try again. It's okay to get things wrong because that's how we learn as well. So don't worry, try again. And there we have it. And that is my entire branching scenario from scratch. And to show you how easy it is to go through. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but now it gives me the option to show you how cool is this, right? So I've got my scenario that I've uh, created. I want to see what it looks like for my employees on their phones. And I've even got it here on my phone to show you how beautiful that looks, which means that my staff can truly do this anywhere, anytime on the way to work. They could do this, you know, I mean, imagine sending this to someone to do before they even started working with you. You know, you don't want to throw people in the deep end you don't want to you know leave them to kind of falter so we can see what it looks like on the phone on the tablet and of course on a big screen as well here you can just check your privacy access so what I can do here is check that it's all public um, and remember that if you haven't set the scenes that you've used in here your thing link scenes then um, it's not going to be publicly accessible as a scenario. So what I suggest you do is, is when you go into your folder, there's a really helpful tip here. If you click on the box here for checking them all, you can check um, all of your scenes and then check the privacy settings and then set it to whatever you need to. So that's a really nice, helpful way of being able just to go back and check everything in your tour. So back in my tour that I created, I can check the preview, manage access. Here you've got um, all the settings that you need. Show the back button, so you go back and forth, show the points as we did. You can use advanced tracking that gets that individual data, show the results screen at the end. And if you want people to have another go, you can show the restart scenario so that they can do that as well. A few more little actions um, here. I can go into my statistics and of course no one has done this one yet because I completed this from scratch but what I did do is I actually had another one that uh, I uploaded the data so you can get data um, a download a CSV file and you can see that I completed one earlier on um, and I got someone else to complete it so I had two views, two unique visitors, how long they took to go through the scenario. And you can also get individual user metrics. So how long they spent on it, what score they got, what starts they got. 
And when it comes down to assessment, you can see what answers they gave. So if anyone comes into your organization and says, I want to know that all of your employees have completed this training and can you prove it? Here's your proof, because this is irrefutable. You've got absolute evidence. You can even go down to the level of seeing exactly how long they spent on each time on each node as well. So I think that's just a, a really helpful thing to do. So just to reiterate, we've got labels as well that you can add on to in the preview mode uh, when you're in the editor. So you can actually visually see the right paths. Pro tips, if you want to include 360s in your scenarios, imagine me as the manager of my coffee store, coffee shop, and I didn't have a 360 camera. We give you the option to create your own 360 images with one swipe with your own phone, take a panoramic image, upload it to ThingLink, and we'll convert it into that fully fledged 360 photo sphere. Pro tip two, don't forget to try out our AI tools. You know, it's really helpful that we've got AI to give us assistance, um, as I showed you with ChatGPT, but we've also got this built in so you don't ever need to lose, leave the screen. And of course, I mentioned embedding and uh, we had a few questions in the chat about different types of LMS systems and learner data and analytics that you can get directly in the scenario editor. And here's the major LMS systems that we have integrations with. Um, we uh, integrate with Google Classroom. That's not for learner data yet, but we integrate. You can share your scenario directly in Google Classroom or Teams. It will pop up so you can complete it in your Teams channel. We are actually an app in Teams if you want to um, have us as an extension in the Teams channels. But the main ones you've got there, Moodle, Brightspace, Blackboard, It's Learning, Canvas, 360 Learning, all of those have that deep integration with LTI interoperability, so you will see the grade scores uh, feeding back. So I've got about two and a half minutes left, and uh, I'm, I'm just super proud and pleased to show you how easy it is to use ThingLink Scenario Builder, but I've only scratched the surface. I'm sure that you can see now that, you know, the application of ThingLink, and I see that you're putting it in the chat already, it's just huge for learning and development. And the uh, the ways that you can use it is, is clearly, you know, infinite. Um, those individual assets, you remember I showed you the individual assets that you created in um, your branching scenario. So for example, if I go into my um, ThingLink account here, this is one that I created to show different types of bias in the workplace for an understanding bias course on in diversity and inclusion training. And this has got different types of bias. And um, this is actually part of a scenario, but it's actually a standalone aid memoir. So you can just give your employees, this is a checklist where they want to go back and check things. And if you want to have a glimpse of the future, well, of course, you know, it's not going to be long before you'll be able to build your own chatbots based on your data. Um, that's not something that we provide as part of ThingLink, but we always encourage you to play with third party tools and embed them into your ThingLink assets as well. So all that's left for me to say is a huge, huge thank you to my co-pilot, Kyla, who stood in for Ivan. Um, he didn't make any coffee related jokes yet. I said, see, you were going to say some. And I also. Some lined up if you really want to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> and also, a huge thank you to all of you who are in the uh, webinar, or even if you're watching this, um, so you're not seeing it live, but you're seeing it as part of a replay. You know, do reach out to us, do contact support, contact me, contact us just by hitting reply on the email that you'll get from this webinar and also you know go to support at thinglink.com don't be shy we love hearing examples from you as well we love building case studies and showing these things in action so thank you so much for joining us have a, a really enjoyable rest of the day and uh, 
please do keep in touch with us. And thank you so much um, for joining us. Um, and it's a goodbye from us. Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much.